Uh, our next speaker is going to be our friend, or my friend, Ashley Gant from Action Together Rochester. And she's going to talk to you a little bit about uh, the impact on people of color of this tax bill. Hi guys, I'm Lauren Evans. So I'm Ashley Gant with Action Together Rochester. In your mouth and loud. So I'm Ashley Gant and I'm with Action Together Rochester where we fight for progressive causes um, through collaboration, education, and advocacy, advocacy in our community. So. Sorry, so I'm Ashley Gant with Action Together Rochester, where we fight for progressive causes, racial justice through collaboration, advocacy, and education in our communities. So I'm going to talk about how this bill affects people of color. Um, I'm nervous, so I'll try to read slow. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, so the tax bill was barely finished as it was being voted on, so we don't even know the harm, all of the harm that it will cause. Let me just give a few highlights of the Republican madness. A family paying for their parents or children to receive long-term care exceeding 10% of their income can no longer deduct that cost, but the ultra-rich can pass on $11 million in inheritance before ever being taxed. A teacher can no longer deduct the cost of classroom supplies, but the rich can deduct more than before for the cost of a private jet. The top six richest people in the world have more wealth and power than the bottom 3.5 billion, and, the, and this bill will make it worse. Whoa. The tax bill will pile approximately $1.4 trillion into our deficit, according to the Congressional Budget Office analysis. And at a time when the economists agree, <clears throat> it makes no sense to do so, adding insult to injury. Senator Mark Rubio, who is a Republican, has said the shortfall for these tax cuts for the rich can be made up by cutting Social Security and Medicare. Oh, this tax bill is an atrocity. It's an attack on democracy itself. It, its effects will be in place long after we show these Republicans what's what. It's an attack on the bottom 99%. I don't think it's hyperbole to say confidently that this will negatively affect everyone here. And I have to be honest and say that's kind of a relief. Because if it only affected people of color or differently able people, I don't think so many people would have showed up. Know that I'm not shaming you because in today's world you have to pick your battles or you will burn out. But I do want you to know that we have been doing this work for a long time. We have been fighting for our lives and, the livelihood, and our livelihood long before Trump ever came into office. And we'll be, we will still be fighting when he's gone and when everyone goes back to their day-to-day -day lives. We're fighting this bill because this bill perpetu perpetuates white supremacy. And let me explain why. The, system at work in the, the systems at work in the U.S. have worked together since the end of slavery to ensure that black and brown people stay poor and powerless. That is systemic racism. An example of systemic racism is the historical, and not so historical, as recent as two years ago, redlining in black neighborhoods. Redlining, for those who may not be familiar, is the practice of denying loans to black people who are looking to invest in their neighborhoods, their homes. This practice was the foundation of dismantling minority neighborhoods. Houses fell apart, business fell apart, and they could not thrive. You get the picture. Yeah. Systemic racism has kept black Americans poor and powerless and this bill attacks the poor and the powerless. Yeah. It places the financial burden of this country on our backs at his, as it has done so many times before in history. But we are not going to take this laying down. We will fight, and we will keep fighting like we have for hundreds of years, and someday we believe that it will be better. So my advice to anyone listening today, show up and keep showing up, and show up some more. Keep watching the Republicans and ask yourselves with every move that they make, how will this affect people of color? How will this affect the marginalized among us? If you are white and your first reaction is to disagree with the message I'm saying because you know this will, this will hurt you, don't. Take a deep breath, do some reading, understand the history of our country and how race plays a role in every single interaction that we have. It feels like we've lost, but clearly we haven't. But the Republicans are coming for everything we have. Yeah. Vote them out. And let me say it again, vote them out. Vote them out! 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 Vote them out. Vote them out. Vote them out. Vote them out.
grassroots, grassroots organizations and grassroots efforts in the electoral races of Virginia this year has made a difference. Knocking on doors and making calls isn't the most comfortable work, but it is work and it is necessary. We must, we must vote them out. Pursue justice, walk humbly before your God, and love mercy. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you, Ashley. Um, how many folks here are registered to vote? <laughs> this is good. Do you know anybody who's not registered to vote? If you do, your big chances today. We have voter registration cards available on the tables over there and with folks walking around. Take one, make someone register to vote. Uh, I'm not advocating, you know, violent methods. <laughs> but I think a little strong pressure would probably be pretty good. So the next person that we have that's going to speak to you today is Michelle Roman. She's a teacher. She's going to talk to you about the impact on this tax bill on teachers. Hi, everybody. Hi. I'm Michelle Roman. I'm a public education teacher in Holly, New York west of Brockport, and I live in Lockport, which is Chris Collins' district. Vote him out! 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 Chris Collins doesn't care, but my voice matters. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. As a public school teacher and a proud unionist, I am fighting for my students and working families across this country, not just in my tiny community. Because our voices matter. I'm here to speak up and speak out with all of you against the GOP tax scam. Because our voices matter. This tax scam gives to the wealthy class off the backs of the working class. Don't give the 1% tax breaks while breaking the backs of the 99. Woo. Kill the bill. Students will be losers when local governments and school districts can no longer take out or refinance bonds on capital projects and other debts. Kill the bill. Graduate students will be losers when they have to use tuition waivers as taxable income even though they won't see a single dollar. Kill the bill. I will be paying off my student loans until the year before I retire. And they want to take away my ability to use those interests as a deduction, while they can take off jets as deductions for themselves. Kill the bill. In the House bill, educators will not be able to credit school supplies that we buy, while millionaires and corporations can write off private jets and wineries and golf courses. Kill the bill. is also harming public education by taking away, possibly taking away, your ability to deduct your state and local taxes, which goes towards public schools. But you can put away 10000 in a tax-free account for your private schools. Instead of child health care, they are giving millionaires a tax cut. Instead of investing in pre-K and community colleges, CEOs are going to get a pay raise. I am Michelle Roman. I am the 27th district. Chris Collins, can you hear me now? We are the people of the United States. Our voice matters. GOP, can you hear us now? Kill the bill. You work for us, not your donors. Thank you, Michelle, so much.
there's one thing that I don't think we've mentioned yet, but that really struck me as really uh, intensely odd uh, or sinister, and I'm going to go with sinister here. There's a provision, and it really pertains to. Um, there's a provision, and it really pertains to um, savings plans, college savings plans, and it uh, it indicates that a fetus is a human being. It's a curious thing to put in a tax bill, but I think we know why they're doing it. Anybody mad? Yes. Hell yeah. Oh my God, that's out of control. It is. So, as an aside, while the tax ramifications are horrible some of the social policy ramifications are even worse. The next person who's going to talk to you is Erica Jones. She's from the Center for Disability Rights and she's going to rock the house with some information about how this is going to affect uh, the disability community or everyone at large. originally was writing this all out, I had this long speech of I was going to give you guys, but I live this, so I really don't think I need to do that. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So there are a couple of, there, there's a bunch of things that uh, really are going to affect our community. First and foremost, um, I don't know if you've seen in the news, but, um, that's reverb. Um, we have been fighting since the beginning of the year for, to save our Medicaid, to save uh, Medicare, save Social Security. Um, we need our health care. We need to be able to stay healthy and live in the community. And all our legislators are doing right now are trying to take us back in time to where we were all trapped in institutions and forgotten. We don't want to live forgotten lives. We want to live in the community. I have a job, an apartment, I drive. I want to live with y'all, with my family. And without, if they uh, succeed with these cuts to Medicaid, Medicare, Social Security, that won't be a reality for me or my brothers and sisters anymore, my siblings. So. That's not, that's not the worst part. Since the beginning of the year, they have come up with all these different ways that they can take money from us, that they can make our lives harder. In one, one way, this is really great. Uh, currently in the ADA, uh, for public accommodations, you have the right if, say, a store or a restaurant is inaccessible to you to go ahead and file a complaint and then they have to fix it. It's in the ADA. But more recently they come up with the ADA Education and Reform Act. Sounds good, right? It sounds nice? No, that's a bunch of stuff. Um, <laughs> I'm trying here, guys. Um, what it does is it makes it a heck of a lot harder for you to put that that uh, demand in. It makes it a heck of a lot easier for the business owner to completely violate your rights. And right now, um, we have, there are so many different votes of our legislators here in New York and all over the country. This is one of the things that we need to hold them accountable for. They need to take their names off of this bill. It needs to be completely squashed. And finally, um, our education. Our education is already terrible. Now imagine that you're you're taking away money from teachers and schools when it's already hard enough to find teachers in special education it's already hard enough to get the schools to teach your child what they need to learn did you guys know that people that qualify for special education do not often get sexual education that's just an example most of us aren't even being taught about our own bodies now take more funding away, more money away, and then more things are taken away. Math and English and 
all these subjects that we need. This is affecting our community and I just want everyone to fight together to kill the bill. Yeah. 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 Thank you, Erica. So I wonder, I'm looking at this crowd and I'm thinking, anybody in this crowd give to charity? A couple of you? Maybe more? Maybe more. Uh, so with the uh, destruction of the itemized deduction portion of the show, um, it looks like donations to charity are going to suffer and all of those things that you fund through your charitable donations will then suffer. I'm just giving you fun little things to think about in between speakers. Are you, are you cheered up now? Okay, our next speaker is a PhD student going to speak about how this affects grad students. Uh, this is Emma, give me if I get it wrong, but Greg Otis? I got it. Hey. Hi, everyone. My name is Emma Gray Gotis. I'm a graduate student. I'm going to shout. I'm really nervous. <laughs> I am a graduate student. I'm a PhD candidate in pharmacology at the University of Rochester, and I'm also a co-organizer of the Rochester, New York March for Science. We are in... And we are an organization dedicated to increase scientific engagement and evidence-based approaches to policy. And today I'm here specifically to talk about how this tax policy would affect me, a graduate student. Needless to say, I would rather be somewhere else. <laughs> but this policy, in particular, how it skyrockets tax on graduate students would decimate the foundational research in science, technology, engineering, mathematics, and computer science that we rely on for our nation's technological industries. So normally on a Sunday afternoon, I would be in the lab, I'd be working on experiment, or best case, I'd be at home, I'd be getting ready for the next week of work. But I'm here today because it occurs to me that a lot of people might not necessarily know what graduate students do. So let me be clear, we are students, but we are also a highly skilled workforce. We're the ones who spend hours staring at microscopes, babysitting, babysitting cells. We teach classes, we mentor younger students. In Rochester alone, right now, graduate students are working hard to treat cancer, to find cures for HIV and AIDS, to treat Alzheimer's disease, and millions of other diseases. We are working to improve internet security, to minimize environmental disaster, and this research has real impact on our economy. In the last 20 years, academic research has added $600 billion to the United States gross domestic product. So most of us graduate students in the STEM fields work upwards of 60 hours a week, and we are not in this for the money. We could find jobs elsewhere, but we choose to work nights, weekends, holidays, because that's what science requires and that's what we love to do. So in exchange, graduate students are paid a small stipend, usually less than $30,000 a year. This is what we use to live. We also receive a waiver. So we do not have to pay the twenty dollars to $50,000 tuition that most American universities cost. And don't think that I'm suggesting that this seemingly free tuition isn't valuable. It's incredibly valuable. I was raised by a single mother who pinched and saved and did everything in her power to make sure her children got an education. So today it's my tuition waiver that makes it possible for me to afford graduate school. But it's not money that I see. It's not in my bank account. It's a line on a spreadsheet designed by institutional accountants to make ends meet. So I'll give you some numbers. Last year I paid $2,000 in taxes. 
If I considered my tuition waiver income, as proposed by the so-called Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, my tax liability would be 8000 My tax liability would quadruple with no actual increase in what I earn. And that's less money for food. It's less money for rent. It's less money to survive. And you can forget about any hope of paying off undergraduate loans, supporting a family, investing for the future. What is that? <laughs> Higher education would become less accessible than it already is, and this important mechanism would be removed from anyone who is not already independently wealthy. So the goal, supposedly, is to boost the American economy. I am for this, we all are, but we aren't talking today about tax cuts for the people who need it. We are talking about making life more difficult for young professionals who are already struggling. We are everyday people who just want to improve our employment prospects. We are normal citizens who just want a living wage in exchange for the hard and valuable work we do every day. And as you've heard again and again today, this isn't the worst of it. There are countless provisions of this bill. It will hurt each and every single one of us. And it's being pushed through, and we don't even know what's in it. It's a deliberate, systematic assault that gives tax cuts to the rich, stealing money for the people who can least afford it. all for coming out today. Thank you for shouting with me about this dangerous, unfair legislation, and thank you for bringing your time and energy to something that will cripple our nation's economy for years and decades to come.